Since lines are much easier to work with than more complicated functions, it can be extremely useful to approximate a function near a particular value with its tangent line. That's the central idea of this video. Let's start with an example. Suppose that f of t is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit at time t measured in hours, where t equals zero represents midnight. Suppose that f of six is 60 degrees and the derivative f prime of six is three degrees per hour. What's your best estimate for the temperature at 7 a.m. and at 8 a.m.? Please pause the video for a moment to make your estimate. The temperature at 6 a.m. is 60 degrees. So the temperature at 7 a.m., which we're calling f of seven, is approximately 60 degrees. But we can do better than this. At 6 a.m., the temperature is rising. In fact, it's rising at a rate of three degrees per hour. If this rate of change continues, then by 7 a.m., the temperature will have risen three degrees and reached 63 degrees. And by 8 a.m., the temperature will have had two hours to rise from 60 degrees by a rate at a rate of three degrees per hour. So f of eight should be about 60 degrees plus the three degrees per hour times two hours, or 66 degrees. These estimates use all the information we're given, both the value of the temperature at 6 and its rate of change. Let's see what these estimates mean graphically in terms of the tangent line. I'll draw a rough graph of temperature over time, and I'll also draw in the tangent line at time 6. At time 6, the height of the function and the tangent line is equal to 60 degrees. The tangent line has slope three degrees per hour, so that's a rise of a run of three, which means that at seven o'clock, which is one hour after six o'clock, the tangent line has risen by three degrees. And at eight o'clock, the tangent line has risen by another three degrees. So at seven o'clock, our tangent line has height 63 degrees, and at eight o'clock, our tangent line has height 66 degrees. When making these estimates here, we were actually using the tangent line to approximate our function. Our actual temperature function may be rising more steeply than the tangent line, or it possibly could be rising less steeply, like in this picture. But either way, the tangent line is a good approximation for our function when time is near six o'clock. The idea of approximating a function with its tangent line is a very important idea that works for any differentiable function. Let f of x be any differentiable function and let a be an arbitrary x value. Let's suppose we know the value of f at a, we'll call it f of a, and let's say we wanna find the value of f at an x value near a, let's call it a plus delta x, where delta x means a small number. If we can't compute f of a plus delta x directly, we can try to approximate it using the tangent line. We know that the tangent line has a slope given by f prime of a, and so when we go over by a run of delta x, the tangent line goes up by a rise of f prime of a times delta x. So the height of the tangent line is going to be f of a plus f prime of a times delta x. The linear approximation principle says that we can approximate our function with our tangent line. In other words, f of a plus delta x is approximately equal to f of a plus f prime of a delta x. Remember that delta x is supposed to be a small number because if you get too far away from a, your tangent line is no longer going to be a good approximation of your function. But how small is small enough is sort of a judgment call. Sometimes the approximation principle is written with different symbols. If we let x equal a plus delta x, so x is a number close to a, then delta x is x minus a, 
and we can rewrite the approximation principle as f of x is approximately f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. The quantity on the right side here is sometimes referred to as L of x and called the linearization of f at a. That is, the linearization of f at a is L of x, which is equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So the approximation principle can also be written as f of x is approximately equal to L of x. Let's look a little more closely at this linearization equation and what it has to do with the tangent line. Suppose we were going to try to write down the equation of the tangent line at x equals a. Well, the equation for any line can be given in point-slope form as y minus y naught equals m, the slope, times x minus x naught. Since we're looking for the tangent line that goes through the point a f of a, we can set x naught equal to a and y naught equal to f of a. Also, the slope of the tangent line is just f prime of a, so we can rewrite this as y minus f of a equals f prime of a times x minus a. And solving for y, we get y equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So this equation for the tangent line is really just the equation that we have for the linearization. The linearization is really just a fancy word for the tangent line. There's a lot of notation and definitions on this page, but there's only one important principle that you need to remember, and that's the idea that you can approximate a function with its tangent line. If you can keep that idea and this picture in mind, then it's easy to come up with this approximation principle and its alternative forms. Let's use the approximation principle in an example. The approximation principle tells us that f of a plus delta x is approximately equal to f of a plus f prime of a times delta x. We need to figure out what f should be, what a should be, and what delta x should be. Since we're trying to figure out the square root of 59, it makes sense to make our function the square root function. For a, we'd like to pick something that is easy to compute, f of a. Well, what's a number close to 59 that is easy to compute the square root of? 64 springs to mind, so let's set a equal to 64. Since we're trying to compute the square root of 59, we want a plus delta x to be 59. In other words, 64 plus delta x is 59, and so delta x should be negative 5. It's fine to have a negative number for delta x. Now, plugging into our approximation formula, we have f of 59 is approximately equal to f of 64 plus f prime of 64 times negative 5. Since f of x is the square root of x, or in other words, x to the 1 half power, f prime of x is going to be 1 half x to the minus 1 half power, or 1 over 2 times the square root of x. So f prime of 64 is 1 over 2 times the square root of 64, which is 1 16th. I can rewrite my red equation to say square root of 59 is approximately the square root of 64 plus 1 16th times negative 5, which is 8 minus 5 sixteenths, or 7.6875. Using a calculator, I can get a more exact value of the square root of 59. My calculator says 7.6811475 up to eight decimal places. Let me draw the picture that goes along with this approximation. We have the square root function, and at x equals 64, we're looking at the tangent line. Our delta x here 
is a negative 5 and gets us down to 59. So we're using the value of our tangent line right here to approximate our actual square root function right here. As you can see from the picture, it looks like the tangent line value should be slightly bigger than the actual value, and in fact, that's what we get. The next example is very similar. Recall that the linearization of a function is just the equation for its tangent line, namely the linearization at a is f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And the approximation principle says that f of x, the function, is approximately equal to its linearization, its tangent line, at least when x is near a. This is basically the same formula that we used in the last problem. We're just calling our value x this time instead of a plus delta x. Since we're trying to estimate sine of a value, it makes sense to let our function be sine of x. For a, we want to pick a number that's close to 33 degrees for which it's easy to calculate sine of that number. Well, sine of 30 degrees is easy to calculate, so let's make a equal to 30 degrees, but let's put it in radians and call it pi over 6. In calculus, we pretty much always want to use radians for sine and cosine, especially when taking derivatives, since the derivative formula d sine x dx equals cosine of x only works when x is in radians. Our x needs to be 33 degrees, since that's the value we want to estimate the sine of. We need to multiply by pi over 180 degrees to convert it to radians. So that becomes 11 pi over 60 radians. Let's plug in for f and a first to get the linearization, and then we'll plug in for x next. So the linearization of our function is going to be sine of pi over 6 plus the derivative of sine at pi over 6 times x minus pi over 6. That is, L of x is 1 half, since sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, plus cosine of pi over 6 times x minus pi over 6. Cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2. So this is our equation for the tangent line, or the linearization of sine of x at pi over 6. Now we know that sine of x is approximately equal to its linearization, as long as x is near pi over 6. So in particular, sine of our 33 degrees in radians, which is 11 pi over 60, is approximately equal to 1 half plus the square root of 3 over 2 times 11 pi over 60 minus pi over 6. That simplifies to 1 half plus the square root of 3 over 2 times pi over 60. And now I'm going to cheat a little bit and use my calculator to get a decimal value for this of about 0 0.5453. Now if I use my calculator to find sine of 11 pi over 60 directly, remember that's the same thing as sine of 33 degrees, my calculator tells me it is 0 0.5446 approximately. So you can see our approximation using the linearization is very close to the calculator's more accurate value. Notice that in this example, the approximate value based on the linearization, is slightly higher than the actual value. And you can see why from a graph of sine. The tangent line at pi over 6 lies slightly above the graph of sine x. Therefore, the approximate value based on the linearization will be slightly bigger than the actual value of sine of 33 degrees. In this video, we used several formulas to express one key idea. The main formulas were the approximation principle, the linear approximation, and the linearization. The key idea is that a differentiable function can be approximated near a value x equals a by the tangent line at x equals a.